when you're at work right or in a public setting and someone says your name but they fucking butcher it like they say in the most whitewash they say man rev or like you know what's that, you, you know that right you know what's actually happened to me yeah so my name is jasmine literally like j-a-s-m-i-n-e it's not hard to read that yeah obviously. and just because i'm brown people will come into my work and they'll see it just like mean? jasmine and they'll, say, they'll call me jasmine yeah, i'm yeah. like you're like, I'm, nah. I'm not. Do you like correct or do you just go like, fuck it, man. It is what it is. Because I've been called. So like for me, do I want a future with this person? Am I going to see <laughs> them again? There's things you have to think about. If it's just some douchebag in the drive-thru, you'll say no problem. <laughs> but if you're going to work with him or something, yeah, hell yeah, brother. Someone butchered my name. They called mm-hmm. me Eek Deep at one point. Right? <laughs> I was like, how the fuck do you even like, right? How? Or like Eek Deep. Maybe or they're like, nervous because Eek you had your big ass well, titties, chest and shit. <laughs> and then they just got nervous. They're like, Eek Deep. You could do that to people, bro. Maybe you have that effect on people. My kindergarten teacher, I still remember this because it was so traumatizing. Mm. He called me Man Rav every single day of that whole school year. Oh my God. And like, I just remember growing up and that shit still fucks with me. Like, we'll say, like, I just remember that. So it's still I feel like that's not too off though. No, no, no. It's like Man Rav versus Man Rav. It is. Man Rav is like pretty off. It, it is. Yeah. A, it's quite like. It's like you just read it like his name's Manny. <laughs> I'm like gracefully exiting out of the shoe game now because I have enough fucking shoes, man. I don't need. Oh my god, shoes. yeah. I was on Facetime with him the other day, and he's like showing me his closet full of shoe boxes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You, I've that, never seen you wear like any of them. I wear like two of them. Yeah, and I like that's I, insane. Bro. The problem is yeah. with me, right? I collect so many, and like half of them are at my house. I get born to blast just thinking about that. Having all these shoes that you just can't wear, dude. I'd be rocking one Jordan one on one foot and <laughs> one Jordan one on one foot. And I'm not gonna lie though, even with okay, like, now that I got my first pair, I'm like, I'm kind of scared to wear them out. Like, I feel like I would just keep them as like because uh, you increase them. No, bro, about that, shoes are, no, 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 bro. Shoes are meant to be worn. Don't yeah. ever think like that. Uh, at the end of the day, like, magic are they break? Just buy another pair. Jasmine, tell him that he can't say that because he fucking has like 200 shoes he never yeah. wears. No, no, that does not mean anything coming from you. It does because I, I, it, it does because I can wear them. Bandia. I can wear them. Bandia, I, never, I, I never, I never have a reason bandia. to wear them though because like I'm not just gonna pull up wearing some off-white fucking UNCs all day. So mm-hmm. I have a Twitter thread, right? We're gonna hop right into this. So it's what's the worst questions you've been asked on a first date? Okay, so I'm gonna read them out and watch you guys' a general reaction. All right. Okay. How many people have you slept with? At the time, it was two. I asked her back and she said, you don't want to know, babe. Oh, <laughs> Jocka, they fucked. She said a world record, though. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. At she- that point, you just adopt a kid from India and you do your own thing for your whole life. That's a good plan. B. Here's the next tweet. Can you afford this dinner? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, bro. I'm not going to lie. I mean, like, okay, if you pull up to Cactus Club, like a Siri Jack, mm. and, like a Jordan hoodie. Yeah. And then like a Tip J, like, you know, like, mind shit. Yeah. maybe that's a valid question. Maybe, but fuck, man. That's what? crazy. I don't know. I feel like that's just calling me broke. No, but it's like some people like, like personally, I'd be some girls offended. literally will go on dates for the sole purpose of getting free food. They'll just be like, can I? Let's eat the thing tonight. is, if you end up with a girl like that, I, I'm saying that's on you for not fucking like, you know, figuring sure that out. But sure the signs be there. If the she's signs will, like yeah, that. exactly. The signs will be there before you take her yeah. on a date. Sometimes I don't like talking to a girl a lot before I go on a date. That's I'm on like, you, bro. I don't like yeah. that. That's on you, bro. You didn't do your... You didn't do your yeah, fucking do, research, man. Your due diligence. Exactly. Yeah. That's facts. I was at the Godora, and then, like, some kid came up to the stage, and then there was some random, like, little kid. And they went up to the Ragi, while the Ragi was doing kitten, mm-hmm. and they're like, Chakde! <laughs> and then I, like, lost my shit, right? Because I was like, dude, we're at a Godora, like, a place of worship. This kid needs, like, some fucking chapeira and chapeira supervision. And then, like, I, like, I like, remember going up to my uncle. I'd be like, Uncle G, like, it knew, like, to see some balo and shit. Honestly, that's if that's all that's if that's all you said, that's not even that bad. Well, I was a younger. Yeah. That's yeah. not that bad. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe the kid was having the time of Maybe the kid is like a dude, right? Yeah, maybe the kid was having the time of her well, life maybe listening like, to maybe, the keys. Maybe okay. I don't know, man, though. Because mm-hmm. that's just kind of fucked, right? <laughs> Come on, like the <laughs> Imagine a grunty or like a ragi just doing some really nice Qatar like dude, what if like somebody or whatever like, connected <laughs> to connected to why grew like pure like pure connection, it. like pure hundred percent a connection to pair <laughs> <Chakne! laughs> <laughs> that's fucked man yeah like if i'm listening to fucking keaton right and i'm like eyes closed i'm like really in it right just catching this nice shabd right yeah. and as a random kid like Jack thing. <laughs> like, Yo, that man. kid's like definitely been to too many banquet hall parties and not enough a kind of arts there's a good balance there you have to keep the parents were like 50 percent like a gordara kid and 50 percent a panga fuck around kid yeah, yeah then these new generation kids that they have are like zero percent punjabi like, they don't bother teaching them stuff like that. They don't see the importance in it. And then the kid just ends up, like, straight. Fucked. Oh, fuck, dude. It is what yeah. it is, though. I was out at this, like, 
I think it was a banquet hall or something. Like, I don't, like, banquet hall party. Yes. But at one point, I saw this kid was going around and was literally spilling food, like, out of the tana. <laughs> like, John K, right? Like, he was, like, taking food and just throwing it away. And obviously, like, I... I hate wasting food. I hate, yeah. I hate seeing it. Just, just not having been grown up. Like, I, you know, that's yeah. not what I like to see. I saw this kid doing this. And what I ended up doing is I went up to the kid. I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, 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 and whatever. And then, bro, kid comes back with crying with his mom. Mom starts fucking giving me an earful. Yeah. Mind you, right? Like, this is like someone that's like kind of related to me. Like a family friend type of yeah. situation, whatever, right? And... They're like trying to give me an earful, like, how dare you talk to my kid like that? You have no right. They're like a new generation parent, right? Yeah, I guess like and that. I'm like thinking in the back of my head, I'm like, yo, like if this was if this was my mom, this wouldn't have happened. My mom would have thanked me. Like what if this yeah. was the rules of my mom would be like, Thank you for telling my kid he's stupid. Thank you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, because bro, it's not like they're acting like I went up to the kid, emotionally abused him so, yeah. through like through hands at the kid. I told the kid, I'm like, hey, maybe don't do this. Go over here and like, you know, go play over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like yeah. the most light way of saying, like, yo, like Davaho, right? Yeah. yeah. And this mom this kid's mom's like, How dare you? Flana, Fluna. Mind you, she's not even that much older than me. I think at like, the time. I like think she parents was not. like that. They just have like it's, it's you, a, you know those parents are like, oh, my kid can never do anything yeah. wrong. It's, a, e it's, like a, it's an ego yeah, yeah, thing. It's yeah, an yeah. ego yeah. thing. There's they, like desi parents that are like that too. Yeah, they'll yeah. do their kids study fine. They'll never yeah. freaking bitch them out. It's an ego thing, from my opinion. Because like, the thing yeah. is, if, if the kid does something wrong, like, and you get, and the kid gets called out for it, they feel like it's indirectly calling them out because their parenting's being questioned. I don't want yeah. that. Which, yeah. to an extent, yeah, it is because your kid should know better. Yeah. Right. But. If your kid's being an idiot, your kid's being an idiot. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not going to sit there and hold their hand and be like, oh, it's okay. Keep spilling more dal or keep yeah. spilling more food. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm going to yeah, go yeah. up to the kid and be like, hey, what are you doing? Like, like, go to the side, like, right? It. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. And like, I'm not even trying to play the whole, like, look at me. I'm a huge, like, I'm an adult, like, yeah, you know, but no, whatever. I think, like, there's, there's, like a, there's a fine line yeah. between teaching your kids... Like, like it, or that, like no, there's, okay. There's a fine line between like other people telling your kids what's right or wrong, and then you getting offended. Yeah, yeah. And then like actually like agreeing with the other person that's telling your yeah, yeah. Kid of that. course, everything to an extent has changed, but the world's always been the world's changing at a very rapid pace now. And I think the emergence of yeah, social dude, media like, has people really always think the world's about to end, and like yo, we're in unprecedented times and shit. But, but shit's always popping off. Yeah, like, it's just ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, like twenty years ago, shit was always popping off. Yeah, hundred percent. I think right now we're just the rise of how dominant social media is especially how it is now like with kids like as young as like you know in grade like one, like the first grade, like bro. 10 year olds yeah. on tiktok not even kindergarten yeah. kindergarten kids like, just spamming yeah. TikTok. Ten years on tiktok yeah, yeah maybe man. even preschool dude yeah. that's crazy yo did you ever hear about how like on the chinese version of tiktok the like algorithm is so educational like if yeah, you're yeah, a yeah. kid it like tells Teaches you stuff that's like and, like yeah it's like math and, and science stuff you can't even see videos of like nungi bunde like waving their like thighs around and shit right? yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but yeah. now it's like in north and the rest of the world they don't have that because they're like yo the mark karab karo. so i was actually in a conversation with a friend the other day he's getting married soon actually right and uh mm, you know we love these topics Stray jasmine yeah we the love relationship oh, why, advice why did you say right jasmine the, the relationship advice for people jasmine has a special gift for it yeah you jasmine, jasmine will analyze this yeah, i was just being real jasmine Jasmine will analyze okay. the horoscopes and everything yeah. and figure this out oh for us. But yo, Jasmine, God. listen, listen, listen. So I, I know somebody that's uh, eventually about to get married, right? And the topic of living with in-laws came up. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and this is the interesting thing. So the girl uh, is kind of a, like at, on, on the fence with it, right? Yeah. As most people would, I would assume, right, to be. But uh, I don't know. They, they got in a really bad fight over it. And now they're kind of just like, they don't know what's going to happen next. And I, I'm there. You got in a me, fight over Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah so because obviously the girl's like, oh, I want my own privacy. The guy's like, no, I don't want to leave my parents. And blah, they, blah, blah, blah. So right. wait, they're engaged? No, no, no. They were going to get engaged. Like they okay. want to get married okay, like yeah. in the next few years here or whatever. But uh, yeah. So the, the the thing that the topic point, the talking point was the living with the in-laws thing. Do you believe that that is like so out of like pocket for a guy to ask for from a girl or do you feel like it's it's just a case by case thing like how do you feel about that i feel like there's so many different ways to go about it yeah um but i think that's definitely something like if you're seeing someone like seriously i think that's something you should definitely talk about beforehand before, 100%. beforehand like i don't think it should be a topic like brought up like right before you're getting engaged because yeah. like, it can cause issues but here's the thing right? most most relationships are where they don't like you're not gonna yeah, talk about yeah. this yeah, and then, you know, it's gonna like, cause friction yeah, yeah. I mean, right, like, yeah. i'm not saying like you'll have that conversation right in the beginning of the relationship like okay so yeah, 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 do you yeah. want to live with my parents like no yeah, like of course not, you know yeah. once you you know like okay like because obviously like you know, it takes a while for you to even figure out if like, this person is like my person or not. like you can see a future yeah, with yeah, this person 100%. and like once you hit that point in a relationship relationship where you're like okay like i see a long term thing or with whatever person, like, yeah, yeah i can see myself marrying this person then you should like 
that you guys down. you guys should start having conversations like that yeah of course but i think like i think for a girl like even like obviously being a girl like i know every girl does want her own house mm-hmm. right because like even like at the, at the end of the day like oh i feel you want to be top dog in your own no not even it's not even about being top it's, dog because oh, yeah. it's like because like at the end of the day like even when you move in it's not only you like you have your mother-in-law too so it's like it's her house too but then it's also like kind of yours yeah but, but then like, like she kind of has like more of a say about what goes on like yeah say you want something a certain way in the house like whatever if she has a different opinion about it like it's more so gonna be her word over yours what if you guys kind like, of thing yeah but then it also like kind of depends because not all like mother-in-laws are like that like there's some that like i know like i know so many uh people like that are married and they're that great relationships relationships with their mother-in-law so i think yeah. it just really depends i know mm-hmm. people who's like crazy like you know the mother-in-law just hate them all yeah yeah, yeah. it happens yeah. Uh, the thing is right like <sighs> but i think it's different if like say like your parents move in with you and you have your own thing going on and you're like blessed in life then your parents move in with you yeah, yeah. it's like chilling because they know it. they're like living with you and they're like yeah, yeah, nice yeah. and sweet and shit and they take care of your kids when you're not home when you're at work like that's pretty mm-hmm. sick i think there's a lot of advantages of having to having your parents around i think for me like having my grandparents around when i was younger really helped me because like learning yeah but also that was like a different generation that is true it's a different generation this generation is also different you can't really compare so much to it but at the same light i i i side almost with um sometimes that i understand the guy's perspective a lot obviously being a guy i think from dude's perspective though it's like how can you really leave your parents when they've like done so much for you yeah i think you have siblings though if you have like three brothers and then like yeah yeah then, then it's you just balance man like, yeah yeah, but, yeah. Like, for, for i example, mean I, I understand that too like obviously like you know like you don't want to leave your parents because like they raised you right yeah yeah and i feel like i all actually kind of feel like that to a certain extent like brown guys like have like that like it's a responsibility without it like actually being claimed that it's there you know i, I don't know what yeah, that yeah, yeah. what the word is like that unspoken. Un- unintentional responsibility no un- that un- unspoken responsibility unspoken, whatever yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever the word is yeah but like um yeah it's like something that's expected but not expected that's yeah, exactly what it is right yeah exactly um the thing is too right i feel like again you're right it's case by case yeah. you know some some people like 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 some people love you know having their parents are like parents around there to help around the yeah, house, fun, yeah. fun, or whatever it might be. Other people are like, nope, I want my own privacy. It depends how honestly. I think it just depends on the person. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're gonna end up with together with. Like, I think actually, it. I think I feel like also has a lot to do with like if you're the oldest sibling, middle or yeah, yeah, yeah. Youngest yeah it fully too. does. It fully does. Like yeah. I think, for, like for example, it's like Manro. For example, he's like Salio <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> so like, Manro's, like a, Manro's the only only son in the family. Yeah, so, I thought Japan move was on. I got different plans. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> I know like brown guys. Which is in babies so much they can't even like do their own laundry or like yeah, wash true. a dish. True. Or, like, you yeah. know, be reminded when to wash the hair and shit. That one's actually me. Like, and, yo, <laughs> like, you know, you gotta move on just to learn that stuff. I feel like when I was traveling, yeah. it taught me how to be like more independent. Yeah. But, like the first few times I traveled alone, I would still be like unhygienic as fuck, bro. Like, I lived away from home <laughs> from home for about six months, right? When I went to uni. So like for me it was uh Yeah, that's true. That's wild yeah. times for a keep yeah, so. when he wasn't living at home for six months, it gotta be slamming caffeine like me, yo. Yeah, <laughs> I was like man, bro. He was on that manner of energy. Yeah. I can't believe that shit. Fuck, man. It would tell me a lot, but I think... If you feel like I, you're like a frat boy back then, you know, chilling oh, with JP guys in the oh house. Oh, man. I was... Party on the end. I was like, ah, oh, wild. Nah, 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 I can't nah. even... Can you imagine that, Jasmine? No. Like, not living at home, being wild, big dog. Okay, come over to my place. Viewer confession. I need you guys' advice here. I love this guy I work with. I have a big crush on him. And we were having a conversation. I figured out his IG account. He's hella low-key. And then he sent me a DM about a class he wanted to take and we ended up taking that together all day for like nine hours straight. He was so excited to see me at work and at school and things were going so well. But then out of nowhere, this guy had zero interest in me. I don't know if I fumbled him somehow, but I just found out today he likes another girl. I could tell that things changed. What do you guys think I did or happened? I thought we were getting along completely fine. Do you think he was just waiting for some other chick? Should I back off now? Maybe he was talking to both of you at the same time and realized that he liked the other one better. I would say that's probably what happened. Yeah. Uh, the the shitty thing about it, man, I brought this up on the last podcast we did. Everyone needs a talking stage. Everyone's usually like in like in and out of talking stages kind of frequently. Yeah. That's just the culture we're in nowadays. Unless you're a demon. Unless you're a demon. You're yeah. just living your life, man. Yeah, that's a very rare people. Yeah, a lot of people kind of just feel like they they're need demons. someone to talk to all the time. Yeah. So I feel like either what would have happened was he was talking to you, realized that maybe halfway through that he didn't really like you and just decided to ghost you. <laughs> Yeah. But here's the thing. I always look at this. It is a sad day. truth. Honestly. It is a sad yeah. truth. I'm not gonna lie to the person. Be like, oh, you know, try along. Like, bro, if someone ghosts you, there's one. It's one reason. They're just not interested. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, I guess so, right? It's either they're not. My inter- heart goes out to these people, man. Yeah, don't worry, you'll find someone better. Sleep at night, man. Thinking about these people. You'll, you'll find someone Tough, better, bro. Man. Don't even stress. Yeah, you'll find someone better, right? 
I once shit myself in the sixth grade. In my elementary school, the music room was in a separate building from the school. And the bathroom was so far. But I actually have Crohn's disease. I'm not nasty like that. I had to shit so badly. And I was walking to the main building. It just happened. And I've never told this to anyone. And I don't know what. <laughs> That's the fucking confession, yo. Dog, we didn't need to know that, yo. <laughs> Bro, we're gonna, we're, I'm glad you got it off your chest. Yo, we were, yeah. we were going to eat after this pod, fam. What the yo, fuck, man? man? Like, <laughs> I'm a Punjabi girl who grew up in Surrey, BC. When I was younger, I love being Punjabi. But then I had to move somewhere full of Europeans and Italians, and they used to make fun of my culture. And when my nana would pick me up from school, they used to make fun of like how my nana looked. And then I lost touch with my culture, and I fully abandoned it. And then when people would ask me what I was ethnically, I would always lie, because I was scared they would make fun of me, like the Italians and the Europeans. Now that I graduated, I really want to get back in touch with my culture, but I don't know where to start. And I want to be able to talk to my BB, but I can't even do that anymore because I forgot most of my Punjabi. Any tips? Just start learning, like, little by little. Like, when I say start learning, there's so many resources online, like, yeah. learn Punjabi, basics of Sikhi, whatever but, like, you need to do. Hard, right? It is hard, no, no, that. that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's fucking easy. It's not, you know, but if you really... But, like, there's, like, beginner YouTube videos. Yeah, if you yeah. really want to learn you something, can, you can even you get, can like, a, yeah, and honestly, like, you can get a tutor. Yeah, yeah you got a tutor. tutor. Just go to the classes yeah. at the Gordora. But the biggest thing is like getting bad for who you are too, man. Like if you missed yeah. out on like those like 10, 15 years of my life or when I learned all the sakis, all the cool stuff about who we are, you just got to get like a good friend group of people who grew up like that and who are down too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a, a thread, but I'm also going to ask guys the question, okay? Okay. What's your worst driving experience? <laughs> my worst driving experience was actually in the hood in Abbotsford. Okay. When I used to be like more rowdy, like when I got my license almost suspended and I had like tickets and shit, I'd just be kicking it home also because like where we live and where I used to go to school for uni, it was so far. I would just be speeding like 60 over the whole way because I'd be like, fuck man, I got to get home and freaking take my bug off and shit, right? And then one time I was driving down one of these roads near here. I obviously won't drop it, but there was this guy that's white beamer, right? And then it was like late night. It was like 1 a.m. or something. I was on demon time coming home. And I was cranking the fuck out of like, I think it was like Tupac or something. I was like feeling myself. Windows down. And I ripped it by this guy like really fast. Like 100 kilometers an hour on like some side road. Right? And I was like young and rowdy. And this guy got offended or something, I guess, because he like ran the city. I don't know. who. I honestly don't give a fuck. Right? <laughs> but then this guy in this beam, right? This guy followed me around. Like flashing me and shit. Like tripping me out. So then this guy followed me around for so long. And I was like, okay, like. And so they like, this is not that big of a deal, but I was like, okay, if I go <laughs> home right now, then it's probably going to pop off. And then I was like, that's not really the move. So I just drove around for like five minutes and then he probably realized he's a stupid ass head and then he left. No, okay. Actually, my worst driving experience was probably like two months ago. So I was like driving and then I pull up ne- next to like this guy in like an orange stang, right? Mm. And I look over, I'm like, okay, hey, whatever. Like, I feel like everybody does that. You just like look over to see who's next to you. Yeah, yeah. And whatever, I didn't like, I literally just like looked over for like a split second. And then I'm like, okay, hey, waiting for the light to turn green this guy was taking a left right and he like the way this guy like the minute that that light turned green the way this guy like came right after me so quick was fucking insane like he just followed me all the way like to wherever i was going and then like i realized he was following me so i didn't like go home i just kept driving around trying to like cut this guy off and then eventually like i just like i like i got um lucky because like the light was about to turn red and I just like ripped it through and I went to do some random plaza and then just waited for him to leave. Like that's one one thing that I hate about brown guys is that they follow girls around. Damn, that's crazy. That's yeah. actually that's really fucked up. Man. If yeah. you actually do that shit, you're like, what would you weird. do like yeah. if you didn't stop following you around? Like that's fucked up. Yeah. Some guy came up to me the other day, uh, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, So how is it when like five brown families live in one big house? Is it like weird because all you guys are rubbing shoulders? And I was like, buddy, not every fucking house has like five brown families in it just because it's big. Most people yeah. don't even live like that anymore. But it's like, like this common thing that people believe, oh, if that's a big Indian house, it's because they live like fucking ten families, like the whole fucking print is just packed living and sleeping in the fucking closet, licking the dirt, <laughs> fucking on the floor, yeah. fucking bundling in the backyard and tents. Like, no dog. Most of these houses, cause the fucking kids move out and they get married, it's probably like two parents, like maybe like a pit bull or some shit. Yeah, like, like it's really not like that. That's what pissed me off. You know, like, what, you know, I had a really interesting conversation <laughs> third with, Yeah, I had a really interesting conversation with this one white dude. He was a uh, uh, shout out him though, because he was honestly just curious. He said he came up to me while I was working and he said, Yo, I have a question for you. I was like, What's up, bro? He said, Why is it that you guys like have these massive houses? It doesn't make any sense. You guys shouldn't be able to afford this, right? Like, like how are you doing it? And my point that I was trying to make is like a lot of upbringing, all they know is hard work. And I'm not saying like white people don't do this or other races don't do this, yeah. but typically, like brown people, like a brown household, all they'll do is like think about work, go do more work. And then just fucking save as much money as they can and won't yeah. spend jack shit. We penny pinch a lot. Or our parents do, essentially, right? And because of that... <laughs> My like, poor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I spend money like an idiot sometimes, too. But that, like, I, got better, I got way better at it now. But, like, compared to, like, my dad, bro, I fucking probably look like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I really like, know, like, if yeah. my parents saw my bank, they'd be like, 30. Yeah, straight. <laughs> 
But yeah, no, that's true. That's a good response, though. I mean, I, I was honestly, like, okay, if you look at the actual question of why do you need such a big house, you don't need such a big house. You just it's want, like you got one life to live. You yeah. want to live in a nice house. Yeah. I, I it's think, on you, right? I think a lot, yo, a lot of the th- times I feel like a le- the reason Opera likes such big houses is because it gives them the gives them the vibe of like back in the pen near the Cortina, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. Sick. I think that's what it is. No, like there's nothing wrong with that. Too. But there's if nothing wrong with it. If you want a big house, go for it. If you give any of these people that say, yo, why do brown people need big houses? You give them the option between having a big house or a small house. They fucking choose a big house every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you think they would be like, sorry, bro, actually, I just want a small house. Like, no, 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 let's give you a small house. Yeah. No, dog. No. This is just how people I'm are. I'm gonna be honest though. I think this is where I might like surprise a couple people here. Personally, like, okay, we're like we're planning up eventually, like, you know, you know, upgrading the house, whatever. Me, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Like, this is just gonna be more shit to clean, more shit to fucking take care of. I'm like, I'm happy with my house right now, bro. Like, fuck, it's really? chilling. Like, my, okay, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys my house. It's is like, like your mental space, though. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. If that's where you spend the most time. It's yeah. like your mental space. But the thing is, I don't even, sp- like, when I'm in my house, the majority of the time, I sp- like, a lot of people go, I stay in my room or do this. Bro, I spend, like, probably 90% of my day in my house, in my office. And, the other, and then the rest of the time, I'm not, yeah. I'm not home. Parents not be time spent at like <laughs> Oh, one. Oh my god, <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> Yo, guys, listen. This is actually so <laughs> sad. I feel so bad for this. I one time. This is recent. A couple months ago, I went four or five days without seeing my mom or dad, and I live in the same house as them. That's so sad. That's that so, happens to me too. Yeah, it's actually so senti, bro. How does it happen? Because do you know why? Because I would oh, go, they time. they go to work like super early in the morning, right? Yeah. And by the time I'm at work or I'd be doing yeah, something it's like else, inverse. Yeah. it's inverse. My schedule or schedule is inverse, right? And then like, bro, it's so funny. Like, literally Monday to Friday, didn't see him. Saw him Saturday. Like, oh, you live here still? And I'm like, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like some roommate. It's, it's weird. Like some roommate I don't like shit. that. Though. I don't like that. I don't like that feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. But so I've been trying to like con- I've been trying to like spend more time. Spend with like them thirty reason. minutes with him a day, dog. That's not really even, bro. Like just like like go thirty minutes. That's my thing. Like I'll come home. I'll spend thirty minutes with him. I'll go do my thing. That's chilling. Yeah. It changes the whole energy. You're not going to get bitched over stupid shit. Yeah. You're not going to be like, yo, the like, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I already know I come home and I'm like, <laughs> no, yo, I like my dad and me have this thing where every time he comes home, I just, I just dap up my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I just dap him. Or fist pop him. I'm just like, Kidna. Yeah, big Maybe dog. Just, hey, what's up, bro? He's that's like, a real big dog. Shout out my boy, Drip by Rage, for sending us a massive care package. Link in description if you guys want to check his stuff out. Appreciate every single one of y'all tuning in. Uh, it's been myself, Jasmine, Jasmine and Manrov. Take it easy. Bye. Peace.